hello guys welcome back to this channel today's video will be on expansive soil so we'll see what it meant by expansive soil how to identify expansive soil so there is a laboratory identification field identification and finally we'll see treatment methods or mitigation measures for expansive soils so expansive soils are soils which exhibit or show volume change characteristics in the presence of water so expansive soils show swelling and shrinking so they tend to swell in the presence of moisture and during dry season when water is evaporated or some in some uh, method displaced they tend to shrink say type of soils are known as expansive soils so these soils have the opposite characteristics of compression or consolidation the expansive nature of the soils is usually due to their past or present loading history it could be due to the environment or the major uh, factor is due to their mineralogy as you can see on the picture these clay soils clay soils have three different mineralogical structure colonite elite and mont morillonite during colonite an almunia and silica sheet are bonded with another almunia and silica sheet using a strong hydrogen bond whereas in elite an almunia sheet or an almunia structure is held by two silica sheets and such a such mineral is uh, connected or bonded with another molecules using potassium ions in mont morillonite they have the same structure as elite but they are held by weak van der Waals force so in the presence of expansive soil in the case of expansive soils you have mont morillonite structures are responsible for expansive soils so the mechanism is water molecules break this weak van der Waals force so when they break this weak van der Waals force these uh, soil minerals tend to swell tends to swell so mineralogy in mineralogy case this montemorillonite is the major uh, mineral responsible for causing expansive soils so this montemorillonite is abundantly present in black cotton or black clay soils expansive soils causes major damage in engineering structures they cause Celerity, usually in pavement foundations in subgrade and in normal building foundation during uh, flexible pavement the major uh, uh, failure occurs around the perimeter of the pavement or on the shoulder side on the shoulder side so how do you characterize expansive soils what is the properties of expansive soils the expansive soils have high dry strengths and they have low weight strengths they have wide and deep wide and deep shrinkage cracks in dry season so these are known as tension cracks or desiccation cracks we'll see it in the next uh, few minutes this uh, wide and deep shrinkage cracks occurs in dry seasons they have high plasticity expansive soils have a plastic index of greater than 35 value and they have low or very poor uh, trafficability or sustaining traffic loads so how do you identify and test expansive soil so there are three popular methods of identifying expansive soil the first method is related to determining the actual volume change and this volume change by knowing sorry the first method is determined uh, relies on knowing the volume change of the soils by experience so information can come from this chemical composition or by identifying the parent material or knowing the local climate of the region the second method is the direct determination of volume change so how can you determine the swelling pressure of the soil so it relies by measuring the swelling pressure of the soil by using consolidation or audiometer test 
and the third method it is a popular method and it is usually reliable method depends on correlation there are different correlations that are developed by various scholars that relate index properties of soil such as Atterberg limits uh, percentage of clay fractions and so on with the degree of expansiveness of the soil so by knowing such a relation we can estimate or know whether the soil is expansive or not so this picture indicates desiccation cracks this desiccation cracks occur in dry season when water evaporates from the soil mass the space between the soil particles is filled by air and hence causes crack or separation and you can know you can see that the larger by larger and more frequent uh, polygon arrangement or more cracks we can conclude uh, the soil is highly expansive so the larger the crack the larger the degree of expansiveness what are the different methods of field identification of the expansive soils the first one is uh, is determining the sticky nature of the soils so these expansive soils which are princip principally uh, black cotton soils have a sticky nature so when you uh, roll it within your hands they have high plasticity second is cracking in nearby structure there are different cracks visible on nearby structure due to expansive soils these cracks are usually uh, shown on around basement walls uh, you can see uh, window and door failures this is due to expansive soils since expansive soils cause uplift of the structure their color expansive soils have black or gray color and they have shiny appearance when you try to uh, polish it with a smooth object they have shiny appearance there are two popular tests dilated sea test and dry strength test to identify expansive soils so the other methods uh, involves mineralogical identification and knowing the physical properties of the soils mineralogical identification relies on processes such as x-ray diffraction diabsorption analysis or it can be microscopic examination but such processes are too time consuming and they demand a special equipment and expertise so we rely principally uh, majorly sorry we rely on physical properties when you say physical properties on free well Atherberg limits or measuring their linear shrinkage or direct determination of the swelling pressure using oleometer test soils which have a free swell value of greater than 100 are considered as free swell uh, sorry expansive soils and soils which have a larger liquid limit and plastic index are also uh, categorized under expansive soils evaluation of swelling potential of expansive soil so we have seen what's meant by swelling so how do we determine the swelling potential of the soil let's start with the definition the swelling potential of the soil is the ability of the soil and the degree to which the soil might swell if it's subjected to moisture fluctuation you must know that expansive if moisture alone is not an indicator of swelling but moisture fluctuation causes swelling and we have to know that the relation between the moisture content and average Atterberg limits such as plastic in index uh, from previous uh, lecture videos you have seen that the water content below shrinkage limit does not cause any volume change because water limit because water limit below shrinkage limit is very small it does not cause any apparent volume change in the soil so the swelling potential of the soil depends on these factors these factors listed below first one mineral type and amount as you can see a soil predominantly uh, constituted by Mont Morillonite 
and having higher amount of clay fractions are are most probably have higher swelling potential second factor is density the larger the density the larger the swelling potential third one is surcharge load the lower the surcharge load the higher the swelling potential so usually higher structures or heavy superstructures tends to counterbalance the swelling pressure they cause compression rather than swelling and the last one is water content this water content must be related with RS various other birth limits so various scholars have uh, developed correlations for determining the expansiveness of the soils some of them are listed below Holtz and Gibbs in 1956 uh, provided a relation in which that is dependent on free swell values these free swell values are correlated with expansiveness of the soils soils which have a free swell value of greater than 100 are considered to be highly expansive the other popular uh, popular relation is provided by US Bureau of Reclamation this is widely used it depends on plastic index and linear shrinkage values to determine the degree of expansiveness for instance soils which have a plastic index of greater than 35 and linear shrinkage values of less than 11 are categorized under uh, very high expansive soils according to chain soils which have a plastic index greater than 35 and liquid limit values greater than 70 are considered to be highly expansive and this welling potential can be estimated by using such a relation this relation is developed by Murthy it is correlation and uh, is the swelling uh, potential the swelling potential is equals to 60 times kk factor is 3.6 times the to minus 5 times plus index to the power of 2.44 so swelling potential greater than 15 then the soil is extremely or highly expanding uh, we can also use casa grande chart casa grande chart to determine the expansiveness of the soils so as you can see soils which have which are labeled above the a line such as monte morillonite which is uh, probably uh, highly expansive soils having higher uh, plastic index values and high liquid limit values as when you can see halosites or colonites they have uh, low swelling potential low swelling potential on the right you can see uh, a chart that relates activity with percentage of clay fractions or percentage of soil particles less than 0 0.002 mm so soils which have a larger amount of clay fraction then have the larger swelling pressure very high swelling pressure so one can use either the charters or the different uh, relations developed by either Holtz and Gibbs or the US Bureau of Reclamation or you can use Murthy to determine the expansive nature of the soil so this is all about today i'll see you in the next video in the next video we'll see about how to treat expansive soils thanks for watching